Welcome back to The Distressed Princess, I'm Rhonda. In today's video, I'm going out to the pumpkin patch and I'm going to find the perfect pumpkins that would be my very first attempt at pumpkin painting. I hope that everyone has a nice pumpkin patch to visit every fall. I'm fortunate that I live right nearby one in Vienna, Illinois called Taylor Farm and they put on the greatest fall pumpkin patch experience every single year. I love that every year they have so many varieties of colors and sizes of pumpkins. And this year they had yellow pumpkins, which I decided to put together with orange and white pumpkins. And this way you get like candy corn pumpkins. I think it's so cute. Even Linus and Lucy were there, but I didn't see Charlie Brown or Snoopy anywhere. So I took my picture with Linus. To make this DIY budget friendly, I'm using some smaller size pumpkins, not the smallest little hand size ones, not the largest, but just a small two or three dollar pumpkin. And I picked these three that were $3 each and were similar in size. This is my inspiration, a picture of some painted up pumpkins online. Actually, I think these are ceramic pumpkins, but I thought maybe I could just paint these faces on some real pumpkins. To make the woodland critter faces, I'm using pumpkin orange, beachcomber beige, milk chocolate, country gray, pewter gray, black, and white. I'm gonna guess that this is personal preference, but I decided to remove the stems from my pumpkin because I thought it would be easier to put the little flowers on the top of their heads without working around the stem. Then I cleaned each pumpkin off really well. Now I used to do some pretty good pumpkin carving, but my hands hurt me so bad working with those little tools nowadays that I decided to give pumpkin painting a shot. Now these are really easy faces, but I wanted to try drawing them on paper first just to make sure I knew how I was going to paint them on the pumpkin. And this is my very first try at it, so be nice. I'm gonna start with the raccoon little critter pumpkin. And so I'll be using my country gray acrylic paint to paint the entire pumpkin. I had no idea how well the paint was going to stick to the pumpkin or not stick to the pumpkin. So I am testing this out for all of you who have never painted pumpkins before either. So this is just apple barrel acrylic craft paint and this is the first coat going on and it goes on okay. And here's the second coat going on and it goes on pretty well but there were a few places where the first coat wanted to peel up on me. So in order to combat that, I decided on the other two pumpkins, I would spray them first with sealer before I painted them. And this is the matte sealer that I used. I sprayed one coat on the other two pumpkins outside and left them to dry while I worked on my raccoon pumpkin. I chose to begin with the mouth area, which is going to be white paint. And I also decided to find a center line on the pumpkin that would be like the center of the face. It'll help me keep things symmetrical. Now paint a white half circle at the bottom of the pumpkin that will be the mouth area. Keep your heat gun or your hair dryer handy so that you can dry each layer as you go along. Now I'm using the darker pewter gray to paint on the mask that goes on the raccoon's face. Using your center line as a reference, go just a little bit to the right of that and draw a straight line going up, then curve it up and swoosh it out. Then going along the edge of the white circle, make another line swooshed out to connect the other one. And then just fill it in. Mm -hmm. 
Remember to dry each part before moving on for two reasons, so that you don't get your hand in it and smear your work. And secondly, because you're gonna have to use a second layer of paint to make it really look nice. Then repeat the same shape over on the other side. And here's the second layer of that color going on. Next, use some black paint to draw a little round jelly bean nose. And then black circles for eyes. I experimented around with different kinds of brushes and this is actually a watercolor brush that I thought might be easier to draw things with. But my favorite brush to use in all of these pumpkin paintings was a very small, super fine tip detail brush. Now paint one black line in the center right under the nose to be the mouth. This is the small detail brush that I liked and I'm using it to put some little white dots in the black circles. And a little white detail line on the top side of the nose. My inspiration picture had some little white lines on the raccoon's head that I guess is fur. I thought it was really cute, so I'm adding those in too. And that's all the painting for the raccoon. Not too bad, huh? Now we'll start on the bear, which is an all over coat of milk chocolate. And remember that this is one of the pumpkins that I took outside and sprayed with the sealer first. So you'll see how the paint goes on with that now. And it did go on better than the last pumpkin that I painted. It did take two coats of the chocolate brown and I didn't have any of the first coat coming back up. So that was good. The face of the bear is the easiest of them all. And again, I found a center line and I'm starting with the mouth area. Instead of white with the brown though, I'm using that beach comber beige. And I'm doing the same thing as I did with the raccoon, just a half circle on the bottom. And here you can really see the difference between one coat and two on the details. So here I'm drying up the first coat and here is the second coat going on and so much better. And I keep calling these mouth parts like half circles, but really I guess they're ovals, kind of an egg shape sideways. Now paint on a little black nose and black circles for eyes. And my eyes wound up being a little wonky. So I wanted to show you this because if you make a mistake, you can wet a paper towel or rag and just wipe it right back off. Now it will take away your base color, so you'll have to reapply. So I did have to reapply the brown paint, but it didn't take any time. And dry it up with your hair dryer and you're back to painting on your eyes. Or whatever you were painting when you made the mistake. Now I'm using the teeny tiny detail brush to put the little white dots in the eyes and a little detail mark on the nose. And that's all the painting for the bear. Now the last pumpkin is our little fox. And remember this is one that I also sprayed with that acrylic sealer first. And this time I'm using some pumpkin color chalk paint for my base coat. And so here is what I learned in this whole DIY. If you're going to paint pumpkins, I think the best kind of paint to start out with, like as far as painting all over the pumpkin and having it stay and not scratch off, is chalk paint for sure. I liked the acrylic sealer to go on first and then the chalk paint, and that turned out being the best base coat. And then you can use your acrylic craft paints to paint on the faces. And maybe because the pumpkin was already orange, so like why am I painting orange on top of orange? Because <laughs> I liked the, the chalk paint orange better, honestly. But I didn't have to use two coats of it, so there's that. The fox was a little bit more difficult than the other two as far as getting things symmetrical because he has such a bigger area on his face. So I used my center line to go by, and this time instead of starting with a mouth, because his mouth and eyes are kind of in the same place. 
<laughs> that sounds silly, but um, I'm using the Beachcomber Beige again, and I'm painting like a big butterfly wing. Starting out on the center line, I make a big swoosh up like a butterfly wing, and then curve it to start coming back down again. And when you get almost back down to the bottom again, you need to paint a little piece jutting out like a little furry cheek. And then repeat the same shape on the other side of the center line. And fill it in. And the fox has the smallest little jelly bean nose in black paint. And the fox gets a little black line going down from the nose for his mouth and two black circle eyes. And again with the white paint, a little dot in each of the eyes and a little line in the nose. And the fox gets the little white dashes of paint on his head too. Now that their faces are painted on, they need ears and decorations. And the ears are made out of felt. So you can see I've got gray and black for the raccoon, orange and white for the fox, and brown and pink for the bear. To make sure that I have both ears the same shape and size, I like to fold my felt in half, and so when I cut out one shape, I'm actually getting two. So now I have two raccoon ears, and I'm cutting out the same shape but smaller with the black felt to go in the center. I did the exact same thing with the orange felt to make my fox ears. And they get white centers. And the bear ears are more rounded and not pointy like the other two sets of ears. I used pink felt for the centers of the bear ears, but I would have loved to have beige. And I wish I would have cut my pink pieces a little bit smaller. Next, I hot glued all the centers to my ears, the critter's ears. And this is the part that I was most worried about, and this is the one that gave me the most trouble, was I thought I would hot glue these ears on. I wasn't sure if the hot glue was going to stick to a pumpkin, a painted pumpkin at that, and sure enough, I had intuition that said it wasn't going to work and it didn't. <laughs> so I thought maybe just not regular glue. So I got out my Gorilla Hot Glue. Yeah, that didn't work either. So then my next idea was to take some straight pins and pin the ears to the pumpkin. And I'm not really worried too much about the pins showing because I'm going to have flowers on the tops of their heads. So they're going to be covered. I'm using just whatever Dollar Tree flowers were in my stash and I decided I would try to poke them down into the pumpkins, kind of like the straight pins. So I needed to get to the wire. So I used my scissors to strip away the plastic and get down to the wire. And that way I was easily able to put the flowers down into the pumpkin. I added some greenery to the flowers and I think it all turned out pretty good. I had a few little nicks in my paint on the raccoon so I painted those back over and if these are going to go outside you're definitely definitely going to need to seal them so your paint doesn't just wash away in the rain but mine are staying inside so they're done. I used white flowers for the bear and pink flowers for the fox and I love how my creations turned out and I had a lot of fun making them. And now I'm not intimidated to paint my pumpkins and you shouldn't be either because these shapes to make these faces were really easy and simple and it might just take a little practice but I know you can make them too. Time for a cute critter video.
the critters and I thank you very kindly for watching our video. I hope you got some inspiration to paint some pumpkins and just have fun doing it. If you want to see more crafting fun, click the link that I provided for you right here and I'll see you next time. Bye!